Hello everybody, welcome back to the Channels Forge. I'm your host David and we're into part two of mold building and resin casting. So at the end of the last video I left you with a load of these uh, silicon molds and now we are going to cast them in two different materials and I'll, and I'll go into that why. So between the last video and now I've been really really busy and I've made a ton more of molds. Um, so essentially I've made a mold for the first wave of Grimdark Terrain's Patreon. Um, so they are all done and ready to go. And I've done a ton of casting. So hopefully if I get on the top down, you can see in this box, I know they're white, so it's probably not the best picture in the world, but there is a ton in there. And I've got another box here. And they're really, really good casts. They are phenomenal. So really happy with those. Uh, and these will really help me uh, build the project, which I shall document in the forthcoming videos. So uh, casting is so easy. You don't need a vacuum chamber. It's literally put the stuff together, mix it up, dump it in your mold. So I will do one right now for you. Uh, but there's a couple of things which I've kind of learned over the last week or so since the last video that I'd like to share with you. So the first thing is that kit that I ordered from Bentley Advanced Materials. Um, it came, it was two packs to it. There was the, the silicon component and the resin component. So the resin is here and the stuff that I ordered uh, was smooth cast 300. Now, all of these bits that I cast in here, and there's a few more, but they're part of the model downstairs. Um, they were all cast in an afternoon. So there's probably, I probably cast each of these molds about four or five times in an afternoon over the space of about three, four hours. Um, and that was down to the fact that this stuff, uh, it cures in about three to four minutes. So with each product that you buy, you get a, an information sheet, which you might be able to see on this, on the top down camera here. Uh, and essentially it documents uh, the type of resin you've got, um, the pot life, and that's essentially how long you've got to, uh, once you've mixed it together thoroughly, that's how long you've got before it starts to harden, um, which is 30 seconds for this stuff. Uh, and then you've got your cure time, which is four to five minutes. So, you know, once you've mixed this together and poured it in, five minutes later, you can pop it out of the mold, leave it on the side. I just tend to leave it overnight just to fully 100% cure. It's already cured, but just to, for my own peace of mind, I just leave it overnight before I start sanding or moving it around or whatever. And then you can go straight into mixing some more and, and just casting. So you can really churn it out super fast. Now, when I, when I did this for the first time, I only did one cast and it came out beautifully and I was really happy with it, cool. And then I thought, well, I'll just dump a load in, mix it all together and I'll just cast a ton up. But what happened was I was, I was about the fourth pour in into one of these molds and it started curing in the pot because I'd mixed far too much and I was being really slow because it was my first time and that sort of thing, well, my second time. So what happened is I wasted a ton of resin because it cured halfway through pouring, which I was really upset about because it's quite expensive. I think these two are about 25, 30 quid. Now, I know that's not massively expensive, but, you know, 30 quid is a prayer tour from Forge World or it's a... 10 man box of space marines so mark three or mark four so you know it is expensive and you have to be really careful about what you're doing so what i found is with this stuff i tend to pour three molds at a time but this stuff is really really good so if you're halfway through a model and you think oh i need two more of those really quickly so i can start putting this together you can just mix it up pour the three that you need, let it cure for a couple of hours if you really need it desperately, uh, and then just whack it into your model and sand it down or whatever you need to do. So this stuff is really, really good for that. And this is what I'll use for our demonstration today. However, there is some other stuff, exactly the same brand, everything else, uh, but this is called Smoothcast 310. And this is really good because, and I'm just going to read the spec sheet to you, it's got a pot life of 15 to 20 minutes. So once you've mixed it up really good, you've got 15 to 20 minutes to mess around, scrape the edges, pour it in, be really careful, pouring it into your moulds. You can take a bit of a breather, a bit more of a relaxed attitude to it rather than just ham it in. You can be a bit more careful about how you fill the mould up because if you pour too much in, it will create kind of like a... 
uh, like a dome across the top. And what that'll do then is um, it means you'll have so much more sanding to do. Now I'm lucky because obviously I've got my CNC machine. I just whack it on that and flat it off and it takes minutes. Whereas if you've got to get there with some sandpaper for an afternoon, it's a pain in the neck. So this stuff allows you to be a lot more accurate. So if you're casting for the first time, I would highly recommend Smoothcast 310. And all of these details will be in the uh, description below, so don't worry about it. Next is another product which I think is really good, but it has its place. So this is a Woodland Scenics uh, and it's plaster. C1199 is the correct term for it. And you've probably seen this in any hobby shop around the world. It's a massive brand and they sell these silicone rock molds that you can mold, uh, you pour your plaster into uh, and then you can put them on your polystyrene wall, join them together with a bit of plaster and hey presto, you've got a rock face, which I will be covering in the next board build video because I'm, I'm doing a custom build uh, for a six game scenario that Boris and I are filming in about six weeks time. So I've got to really move with that board, but I will document absolutely everything in that board build. Um, so anyway, the reason why I'm gonna use plaster is if I've got a wall section, that I wanna make, but I wanna make it damaged. Um, filing and sanding away and destroying these resin molds is so difficult, it's a real pain. But if you cast them in plaster, you can just take like a metal ruler to it or a tip of a file and just chip away at it. And it chips away really realistically because you've gotta remember that these wall sections they're made of rockcrete uh, or you know cement and, and natural stone or stone shipped in from another planet or using the indigenous stone on the planet that we're on. So this chips away really good. And the best thing about this, this is so cheap. Nine pounds 75p from the UK um, and this stuff will cast a hundred of these real easy. So um, you get some real good uh, usage out of it. The problem with it is I found if you've got lots of detail in your mold, it does tend to, when you try to pull it out of the mold, even if you leave it for 24 hours or even 48 hours, it still tends to break in the mold because it is quite fragile compared to the resin. So you have to be really careful about how you pull it out of the mold. Um, and it, it contains a lot of air bubbles. So I've managed to get some of the casts done where there's minimal air bubbles but you still get way more compared to the resin, which you hardly get any. It's only in the top where it bubbles over, but you sand that flat, so it doesn't matter. So use this in the right application. So what I plan to do in future boards, not the one I'm building at the moment, is that you know I can have a wall section, and if we wanna make it destroyable terrain, I can cast the same part in plaster, make a destroyed version, and then switch it out for the, the immaculate version. So the wall will be fairly modular. And if we've got a whole wall section, we can just make a big crater in it, glue it all together, switch it in, switch it out. So that's one advantage of using the plaster. Um, and it's a lot easier to chip away, like I said. So I will do plaster today as well. Um, just so you can see the differences, but it's really cool. You could also use it as a bit of a practice mold because it's super cheap. You can practice your mold to make sure you're happy. Um, but you know, if you kind of know what you're doing, I probably wouldn't bother, but it just depends on how you feel really. The other thing to talk about with the plaster and these molds that I've made, these are really basic molds. As you saw in the previous video, I got the stuff I wanted, double side taped it to a Lego form, dumped the, um, silicon in the top and that's it, then we cast what we've made. If you wanted to make a much more complicated mold, like a two-part mold, like um, like Forge World does for example, I might go into this later on, but right now I don't need to make a complicated mold, you will get a better result for the plaster because you're not trying to tease it out of this tiny little space. You'll have a mold that comes in two parts. So you, you, you make your complicated mold or two-part mold I believe it's called, um, uh, dump your plaster in the top and then when it cures you pull one side out pull the other out and then you won't get you shouldn't get any of the um, you won't get any of the plaster breaking away from the thing that you've molded so there is a better way of making molds but for this purposes they need to be super simple and because we're using such a rigid really nice product in form of this resin here 
you don't have to worry about it chipping out or damaging it because it is super solid. So something we might explore in the future. Right now, I don't need to make two part molds. Um, and I'm happy that if I get a bit of a knackered cast from the plaster, I know I'm going to be using it to battle damage. And I can just, you know, if there's an air bubble in it or if there's a bit that's snapped away inside, I can just make that into like a, a pock mark from a missile that's hit it. So a really good product, product, but very situational depending on what your needs are for your building. All right, I've waffled on for far too long. Um, do you know what? There's one more thing I want to talk about. Waste. So I found this over the last over the last week that making molds out of silicon and casting and resin creates a whole heap of waste and in particular plastic cups because every tutorial online suggests that you use a measuring jug like a very specific one with lots of measuring markers on the on the side of it and if you need to be super accurate they're a great option but because these are so easy to use, it's generally just the same level, so you can just match it up in the side uh, and then pour one into them, mix it up and then pour it into your, into your silicon mold. But I just found, I mean, I, I've got through about 30 of these cups already, and I did have some larger measuring ones, um, and they were quite expensive, and I got through about 10 of those, and I just, when I was going into the kitchen to just dump all the rubbish, I thought, oh, this is, this is not good. So... Uh, this weekend, I'm going to go out and buy some Tupperware from the local supermarket with a sealable lid. And what that means is, is when you pour your resin, so you pour part A into one, part B into another, and then you pour one into the other, mix it up, and then that's what you use to pour into your uh, into your mould, which I'll show you soon. So then, because these don't have a lid on, for example, if you just leave them on the side, you're going to get dust, fluff, dog hair, cat hair, whatever. Uh, and then if you want to reuse that, which is a good thing to do, your cast will just have all this stuff just on the edges of it. So you really need a, a lid. So if you buy some Tupperware with a straight edge and a lid that fits on, stop, on top, you could still get your little spatula in there to, to tease it out so you use all of the resin or the plaster, whatever you're using. Then you can reseal it and that will keep it fresh, just like it does in the bottle, and then you can then use it again. So that's a really good thing to do. So I am going to do that this weekend um, because I do care about the waste that this is creating. And I also know that obviously resin is not the most environmentally friendly uh, substance in the world. But hey, we're in a hobby that produces thousands and thousands of miniatures every year. So, you know, um, and it's the same with part B. Uh, but then you might say, well, hang on a minute. You've got, you know, one of these with a load of cured resin in and it's hardened. True, but all you need to do is wait till it cures and then you can just tease it out and it comes out in one big clump really cleanly uh, and then you can then reuse that again. So I would definitely be doing that this weekend when I nip off to the shops. Uh, but for now, I've just got um, these containers. Oh, excuse me. Uh, and then for the, for the plaster, which I'll show you in a bit as well, I use just a little jar with a, a lid on it. I put my plaster in, put my water in and I just shake it. And shaking with a little bit of encouragement from a spoon um, provides a really lovely mix. And the great thing about the plaster is, if you've got a mold that's got a lot of detail, you'll probably lose some of it when you pull it out of the mold, but you can make this quite liquidy um, and it will flow into the edges a lot better. And if you in particular make a two-part mold, um, then that would be ideal. So you can make it quite watery. The only problem is when it starts to cure, it heats up and a lot of that water rises to the top. So you might need to just top it up with a bit more plaster once it's cured. It's not perfect, but as I said, if it's a ruined section, it doesn't matter. Obviously, if you mix the directions on the, on the plaster, you won't get so much water coming at the top, but I just wanted to make it a little bit more liquidy to make it easier to pour. Okay, let's get on with uh, casting these sections. I'm only going to cast uh, a thin section because uh, I haven't got a lot of this left. I've used so much of it. So I'm going to use this little wall section. I'll hopefully be able to find one I've cast already. Have a quick look in my box of bits. Uh, no, I don't actually have a section. Oh, well, there you go. It's all about preparation, right? Uh, but it's like a midsection that goes on top of the, the angled section and then the, the walls go on top. So um, if you can see that in the, in the top-down camera there, the mould is super clean. Uh, and one thing I would recommend 
once you've poured your resin in and it cures and you pull it out, I would have a dedicated tray. I've got a little kitchen tray down there and I always turn my mold upside down and that stops all of the fluff and the dust getting in there. Because if not, when you come to it, I usually use my airbrush just to blow it out or I put it in the sink, give it a quick wash and then let it dry and it just slows the whole process up. So I know as soon as I've pulled my cast out, face down on a really nice metal tray, and then when you want to come and cast again in 10 minutes time, you just flip it over and pour in again and you haven't got any pain. It's like I said to you in the previous video, I need to be super efficient because I'm one man running this channel. Obviously my guests and Boris help out, but you know, all the stuff behind the scenes, it's just one person. And I, you know, I go from one job to another. So while resin's curing, I do a bit of editing. Whilst I can't do any of that, I do something else and something else. So I just constantly have to go from one job to another and I make my life as easy as possible, as much as I can. All right, a lot of explanation. Okay, so we're just gonna get uh, part A. I don't need a lot because it's not a massive mold. Shall I use that? Okay, I've also, you have these shot glasses here, these little plastic shot glasses. I'm just thinking if it's enough to do one. No, I'll tell you what, I'll put a little bit more and then if I overfill, I can just pour it into another bit of, into another mold. It's already a bit of fluff in there already. Okay, nice and gently. We don't want to use too much. I think that's loads. I've got a little bit left. Same with part B. Sorry, I should mention, it's really bad, isn't it? I should give it a bit of a shake. But don't shake it too vigorously because you'll start to introduce lots of um, air bubbles, which is not what we want. So a nice little, oh yeah, that'll do. There's a few bubbles in there, but. Okay, just try and match it. Yep, perfect. Put that lid on, because if you knock it over and it goes into the carpet or on the floor, not cool. All right, need to get ready, get prepped, because uh, it happens quite quickly. I need another one of those, actually. I'd rather cast that than that. And then if I do have too much, I will pour it into this shallow mold here because I always need more of these flat sections. So hopefully, if I zoom in on the camera, top down camera a little bit, get this all in shot for you guys. Oh yeah, that's the badger. One thing. Because I made all these forms out of Lego, apart from that one because I cut it in half, um, you can really put them together. And because it's Lego, you know, two by three, four by four, whatever, whatever, you can really package them up together. So when you pour, you're not wasting any resin. Okay, there might be a bit dripping onto the mold, but it, it comes off super easy and you don't get it on your work surface. But that is one of the advantages for, um, for using Lego. And it's cheap as well. And it works. Okay, I think that's centered nicely. All right, I'm gonna go quite quickly. I might not talk because I need to concentrate. Just try and be as organized as me and methodical as possible. There we go, nice. Give this a little swizz. It will start to heat up. So the chemical reaction creates heat, but it doesn't get too hot. A nice gentle stir, gotta be quite quick. Pop that in there, and then we just go oh, straight on with the pour. Nice and steady. Just filling that mold up beautifully. I know my hands might be in the way of the top down, but don't overfill it or you're gonna have to do a ton of sanding, which is not cool. Well, I won't have to do a lot of sanding. <laughs> you guys will. Unless you've got a CNC machine, which I highly recommend purchasing. We've got loads left actually, I was a bit too keen. So I know I need some of these sections here. Oh yeah, look at that, some flats. Oh, loads actually. Yeah, that's good. I'll get one of these flat plates. Lovely. Uh, I'll do, I'll do this little section here. I don't think we'll fill it actually, but, oh, we might. Oh yeah. Oh God, there's loads. 
We'll do this little one. Uh, oh, okay, we're out now. That's good. Cool. All right, so while that's curing, it'll take three to four minutes, um, and I'll do a speeded up or a sped up version of this on the camera as it cures. You'll see it turning uh, from clear to opaque. So just a couple of things to talk about. Uh, we'll use this one as an example. So this was the first mold that I made, um, and there was uh, the way that the, the models are designed to save as much printing resin as possible, I guess. They have these sort of tubes that go in and make them a bit hollow, but when I cast them, I found that when I was pulling them out, they were really hard to pull out. And I thought, well, if I'm gonna use plaster as well, I'm just gonna break them every time. And I did, because I had to put so much force to get them through. So what I did is I cut them out with a scalpel. I just chopped them down loads. So they still have a little bit of an impression in there. Um, and I've, I've got a photo of this one, so I'll show you what it looks like. But uh, it does use a bit more resin, but it makes them so much easier to pull out of the mold. And also as well, when you're pouring resin into the mold, um, it's just, you can see where the resin's going and um, I feel a little bit better knowing that it's gone into the right corners and stuff. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's nice to see what's going on. So, you know, because if you pour it out of resin, you've got tons of bubbles or it hasn't gone into the mold properly. It's just a waste and you've got to use it as damage. And there's only so many models and so many opportunities you can do to switch out damaged parts for good parts in a game because if you're just focusing on, oh, that ball, that wall was blown out, or oh, it needs a, needs a damaged section, and it, you know it just gets too much where you just want to play a game. So um, try not to waste as, the resin as much as you can. There we go, and you can see a time lapse of that resin curing. So that was about 10 minutes in total. I had nipped downstairs to do something else, uh, but you know it will be ready in three to four minutes, which is pretty impressive. So I'm just gonna demold some of this now. So I'll just start with the, the little bit that we did there. You know, it's a little bit soft, mainly because it's thin as well. Clean the resin off the top, and we are ready to go. Stick that face down. Uh, so we'll start with a section that I wanted to mold already. So all I do is I just gently tease those edges. Don't need any mold release or anything like that for this product or this silicon. Split it with your fingers and gently, very gently, just tease it out. And there we go, we have got a really lovely cast. I know that's probably quite hard to see because it's white, but I will get some photos and overlay that if you can't see it. So really pleased with that cast. And then we'll just do the same, just tease it out, just be really gentle. There's no point rushing it. You spent all this time, effort and money, you might as well just do it properly now. Now in this one, you can see that there's a little bit of uh, silicon there. I need to redo this one because uh, under there, you, know, you can see that or not, there is a huge air bubble, so not cool. Um, I can file it out, but like I said, you know, it takes time and effort, which I don't have. So I'd rather just remold it, get it done, and then it's good first time every time. Squeeze it out. That is a beautiful cast. Very happy with that one. And then these longer sections, just gently tease them out. And then just pop them out. And pull these sections back. So, you know, in the space of, I don't know, what, 15 minutes? If I weren't doing this on camera, that would probably be done in 15 minutes. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight parts done off that tiny little bit of resin there, which is really cool. And then obviously I mentioned earlier that you know you can reuse these pots. Um, this needs to cure a little bit longer, it's a little bit thinner, but that can be scraped out and then you can reuse that pot as well. So a great cast from those parts. Next, we're gonna move on to the plaster, and I'm just gonna cast this large section here, and then we'll do a comparison between the two, um, which will be a lot easier. So again, reusable container, little bit of water in there after I washed it out. We won't need a lot of plaster. There are directions on the back here 
uh, about how to use it. I'll just read them to you very quickly. Uh, pour 10 ounces of plaster uh, slowly into 4 ounces of cold water. Mixing ratio 251. Let stand for 2 minutes. Stir thoroughly for 2 minutes. Yeah, and that's fine. So, uh, uh, yeah. sounds really bad, but I've just judged this by eye. I've used this stuff so much in the past. I just mix it to the consistency that I like. That's more important to me. Um, but if you want to get your scales out, go for it. Okay, so just pop a little bit in there. I've got some water here, just cold water. I just tend to add a little bit, mix it up, get it to the consistency that I like. And we just want it so it will flow nicely into the, um, into the mold, but not too much water in that it leaches out and it just causes a big pain. I've actually put a tiny bit too much water in there, so we'll just put a little bit more plaster just to calm it down. There we go, see how we get on with that. Messy job. Give it a good stir, it says two minutes, but you know, this is such an intense kind of stirring. Uh, you don't need to do it that much. Uh, this stuff very rarely fails. Uh, yeah, that's all right. I think I might just put a tiny little bit more in just to thicken it up. A little bit of seepage there, but it's not too bad. Oh. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I don't know if you can see it on the top down camera very well, but you know, that's pretty good. Now this will take a lot longer to cure. Uh, and if I was doing my best Blue Peter impression, I would say here's what I've done earlier. But unfortunately, I uh, wasn't as prepared. So I'll just have to go away, do some editing, come back and then show you the comparison. But you guys won't care because it'll happen in a matter of seconds. So same process. I'm just being really steady as much as I can. Nice and gentle pour into that mold. Really good consistency. Nice and gently. Beautiful. Okay, and I'll just give it a little tap just to make sure it all goes in the right edges. You can see it on camera, good. I've got a little bit left, so I might as well cast another. I'll cast this section here. Uh, no, I'll do not. I'll do another wall section. Look at how those meet with a bit of Lego. Oh, pour that in there. Good, still got a little bit left, so why don't we do some of these flat sections? That'll be pretty cool. I'll just move that down. Give that a little tap. Uh, we'll do this larger one. Got a little bit left, we'll do this one here. Yeah, and we'll just dump a bit in that one. The beauty of it is, if you misjudge how much resin or plaster you need, you can just pour it in, and if you've got a few spare molds going, you never know when you might need some extra parts, or if you're building a model, what I tend to do is I tend to plan it out with the 3D prints I get from, uh, Goldie's Prints, Brad at Goldie's Prints. I, I plan it out with the prints that he sends me because they're beautifully flat and smooth and really lovely. I plan what I want to build and I've got multiple prints of all of the different options. Uh, I plan it, I write how many I need down and then I just cast and cast until I've got everything I need, usually in an afternoon. Um, and then uh, once it's all cast, I, um, I sand it all flat and then I start constructing the model. And you'll see that uh, in the board build video that I'll do for this particular scene. I'm not going into too much detail because I want to keep it a secret as much as possible. Okay, cool. Uh, could have done with a little bit more plaster in there. Oh, I don't think we're going to tease any more out. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We'll sand it flat, it'll be fine. Okay, um, I'm not going to do the time lapse of this curing because it will probably take three or four hours and 
I can't imagine it will be a very interesting video to watch. So um, I'll pause it there and I'll come back to you when this is all cured and ready to go. All right, it's been an hour since I poured the plaster into the molds here. Now in an ideal world, I would leave this overnight you know, 12 hours, but 24 hours ideally, just to make sure because, you know, again, it's time and effort. If you pull it out too prematurely, you might crack some bits that you may not have cracked if you'd left it to cure longer. But I've had a quick peek and it's actually pretty good. So I'll start with these, these bits here. And again, we're just gonna tease, comes out so nicely. Tease these a little bit. And we'll start with this little one. Just be really gentle, because again, I've only left this an hour. I mean, that is pretty good. Just tease this one out. Sorry, trying to keep it all in shot. Oh yeah, I mean, they are beautiful. Let's have a quick inspection. A couple of tiny, tiny air bubbles at the front. You could easily just run a little sandpaper over and make them just look like a bit of damage. A little bit of air bubbles on the inside, but do you know what? If you've got some liquid green stuff, no problem. Uh, now for the big ones. I'm not too confident in these ones because I say it's a bit early, but we'll see how we get on. These ones are much deeper, so they're going to be a bit trickier to grip the side of and pull them out. I think we'll be all right. Just gentle pressure. Oh, do you know what? That is absolutely immaculate. <laughs> we'll get you some photos of that in a bit. Now we'll go for the big daddy. Oh. Bioshock reference there. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I can't help myself. Really gently. Let's have a quick look. Tiny, tiny air bubble on the front. Other than that, that is an immaculate mold as well so i'll just clear these molds out of the way face down to stop any fluff and dirt getting in them um i know they're white and the top down camera isn't very good but i will take photos and uh, overlay them so you can have a look at them now so you can see you know the color uh is a lot more creamer for the um for the plaster and the uh, obviously the white resin is pure white which is lovely uh, you can see where i over poured it as well with the um uh, with the kind of overspill there, but you know that again that's easy just to snip it off then flat it off Obviously, I'll use my machine make it a lot easier um, And the molds from these plaster sections are really lovely Now you could use the plaster and build the walls out of that and not have to worry about the resin But I do think the resin gives you a better cast uh, But as I mentioned earlier if you just want to create battle damage uh, Or you want to create a whole ruined wall section I would highly recommend using the plaster. It's a lot better, a lot cheaper, and when you chip it away, I think it looks a little bit more realistic. I haven't done one just yet for this video, but when I do the board build for this board I'm building, I will do it then and I will show you the difference. Um, so uh, you, you'll be able to see what's going on there. I think in general, fantastic casts really pleased with them and for a beginner you know i'd never cast anything my entire life two weeks ago or three weeks ago and now i've cast over probably 60 70 pieces from 3d prints using off the shelf purchasable items um and now i've made my own cast so i'm so happy and you know as great as the prints are from brad i just can't keep i can't afford to keep paying to have those printed all the time so this is a lot cheaper and also it's a lot more immediate as well although brad is very good at getting those items out to me you know i won't get it within three hours so i know if i'm halfway through building a model and i've run out of a particular piece i can just go into the garage cast it four minutes later if i use the uh, smooth cast 300 and i've got the part that i need sand it flat use my machine whatever and i'm ready to go so there are lots of advantages to casting your own items. Um, the only thing to say is this new stuff, this uh, Smoothcast 310 that has a lot longer working time and a longer cure time, I'm really keen to, um, to explore that. I don't doubt it will be any different. It will just allow me to cast this entire lot of moulds in one go rather than having to mix three or four or five or six sets and then 
pour it every time. So that'll be cool. And because I'm not super desperate for it, I can just leave it overnight, let it cure, pop it out and away I go. So really good to have some of this handy if you just want to build up a stock and you've, you've got plenty of time or this stuff because it cures so fast, it's really good for immediate sort of, ah, I didn't make enough, I'll make some more right now. All right. That is it. I really hope you've enjoyed this kind of mini series. I'm really looking forward to the future of this series because I've got so many really cool plans and I just think sometimes stuff that looks really good, it, it feels like it's complicated to build and it really isn't. If you just apply a little bit of logic, buy some equipment, buy the right tools, it can be so easy, I promise you. So I'm really looking forward to sharing some of the projects I've got in this format. Uh, hopefully it'll be a bit more uh, in depth for you as well. If you're casting your own stuff, take some photos, put them up on your social media, tag the channel in. I'd love to see what you're making uh, and I'll share it of course on my social media as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it was useful and I'll see you in the next one. Mm.